If you've ever wondered why some people elect to build their own computer when they don't even possess a degree in computer science, then this video is for you. First, let's try to calm your nerves a bit. When we say build a computer, we're not talking about actually building it. We're just assembling the parts that have already been built for us. So try to think of the process of building a computer as being similar to assembling a table from Ikea. Why would somebody want to build a desktop computer to begin with? Well, if you're able to spend a little more at the start, having a computer with fully interchangeable and upgradable parts makes for much better investment over time, since you don't have to replace the whole computer every five years or so. Most difficult step in building your first computer is the first one, choosing and purchasing the right parts. Personally, I believe that ordering computer parts online is the best way to go. Websites like Newegg and Tiger Direct offer some great tools for sifting through their products by giving you the ability to display just the products that meet whatever specific criteria you desire. So let's go ahead and assume that you're looking at parts on Newegg's site. Where should you start? Well, let's begin by determining what purpose you want a computer for and what your desired price range is. The computer that I'm assembling for you today is a low-end gaming desktop that is fully capable of being upgraded over the next five years or so. In order to keep up with future technology, it is important to make sure that all parts are compatible with 64-bit architecture. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. We just got a shipment here from Newegg. Some parts that I ordered. So let's go ahead and see what we got. packing list. All right. Fantastic. All right. Now, I believe that you should start by selecting the processor that meets your individual needs. For basic gaming, you'll need at least a 3 GHz dual-core Pentium processor. Most Intel processors nowadays come with an integrated graphics card, so you won't need to purchase a graphics card if you're just looking for a general purpose computer. The CPU socket type of this processor will help determine what motherboard you should get. In this case, I've chosen a processor with an LGA1150 socket. So among the motherboards with that CPU socket, I have to narrow down which ones have the options I desire. To allow for upgradability, you should get a motherboard that has at least one PCI 3.0 Express slot and is capable of USB 3.0 and up to 32 gigabytes, up to at least 32 gigabytes of DDR3 dual channel RAM. <coughs> So that's why I have here, this motherboard right here. The good news is that many motherboards come with gigabit wired LAN and 7.1 channel sound cards. So that also saves you some time and money if you don't need anything fancy. The motherboard you choose helps determine what all of your other components can be. For instance, the dimensions and form factor of your motherboard tell you which desktop cases you can buy to house your computer. Since I got a motherboard, that was 12 by 7 and a half inches with an ATX form factor, I needed a case big enough to hold that motherboard. Ugh. You want to choose a case that's both functional and something you can stand to look at for years to come. And by functional, I mean that the case meets the qualifications for your computer's predicted use. Although many computer cases come with a rear fan, High performance and gaming computers need at least a side fan and maybe even a front fan to adequately cool the internal components. Some computer cases come with LED lighted fans such as blue or red, so be aware of that as well.
You may also wish to pick up an extra fan <clears throat> of the appropriate size to fill an empty slot on your case. There are even computer cases that come with a power supply, often saving you even more money. Now, this particular case has a 480 watt power supply, plenty sufficient to power a basic computer. There we go. <clears throat> if you want to have front USB or audio ports, make sure that your desired case offers them. So you can see clearly in front of this case, we do have those audio and USB ports. Okay. For advanced users, you'll want a case that offers as many drive bays as you'll need for not only disk drives, but also hard drives inside. Mid-tower cases, like this one, are fine for most users. The design of this particular case even allows for the toolless installation of drive bay components, meaning that they don't require a screwdriver. Although, as you'll notice here on the back, you do need a screwdriver for some of the components um, displayed here for the power supply. Okay, but the rest of the components are these just thumb screws. Okay, so. <clears throat> actually makes it a little bit more convenient when installing things into this, okay? And of course, you can see the power supply right here. And there you go. You can kind of see into the case there. See some of the uh, power cables and uh, even the rear fan that comes with the case. Okay, now this is one of those lighted fans that I was mentioning. And this here's the 480 watt power supply that came with this case. Okay, and of course you can see the slots for the drive bays and the disk drives. Okay. The next step is your computer's RAM, which should be the same kind that your motherboard can handle and as much of it as you need or can afford. Okay. For instance, this is eight gigabytes of RAM in the form of two four gigabyte sticks, okay, which is enough for a basic gaming computer. Now, it's sometimes better to use two small sticks as opposed to one large stick in order to utilize the benefits of dual channeling your RAM. Now, this here is DDR3-1600 RAM, the best that this motherboard can handle. Now, having a disk drive that's capable of burning DVDs is pretty standard nowadays. So unless you need a Blu-ray drive, just stick with the cheaper option, okay? So we have that here. It's a very simple DVD drive. You just need to find a drive with fast read-write speeds and a good size cache in it. The next step is a video card, okay? So we have here a video card. Now, this is only necessary if you plan to do some high-end video editing or gaming, okay? Now, you need to make sure your video card has the video outputs that you need, even though you can have certain converters which convert certain outputs to certain outputs. Um, it's more convenient to just get a video card that does what you want it to do, okay? now. Personally, I prefer NVIDIA GeForce cards, um, but that's kind of a subjective thing. This here is a PCI Express 3.0 card, which is why I got a 3.0 motherboard. Um, this here is a 2 gigabyte card, 128-bit uh, DDR3 interface. Okay. Now, the issue here is that your monitor should have the same connection that your video card is capable of okay so if you're going to sit here and plug in DVI have DVI outputs on your video card then you should have a DVI DVI input on your monitor okay so let's go ahead and take a look at that now for a monitor you really kind of want a device that is widescreen, LED, and has a reasonably high resolution and contrast ratio, okay? 
For instance, this monitor has a D-sub output and a DVI connection with a 10 million to 1 contrast ratio as well as a 1440 by 900 resolution. Okay. Whew. Beast. Now the advantage of this particular monitor is that it does come with speakers. Okay. Which is convenient for those of you who really don't need a great sound system. I mean it's sound so at least gives you something but I mean it's not going to be you know movie theater quality here. Okay. So let's just take a look at this. Got the stand. Got the power cable here. Some guides. <clears throat> and of course the monitor itself. There it is. Alright. Look at that. So this here is a 19 inch monitor. Uh, plenty big enough for most people's uses. Um, yeah, basically, like I said, it has those built-in speakers in there. Um, pretty energy efficient since it's LED. Uh, but, yeah. Should be a pretty good monitor. Um, only comes with a couple of finger smudges on it. Obviously not from me. But, anyway. Good monitor. Alright. Now, hard drive. Which we have here. Should be as large as anything that you'll ever need. Um, typically a terabyte is plenty enough for most people in their uses. Uh, not good for people like me who take pictures of everything in the world and um, uh, take massive amounts of video as well. But for most people, that's pretty all right. But if you can afford the extra money, uh, go ahead and go for the solid state hard drives. Okay, much more reliable, less prone to crash and destroy your data, as well as being quiet running and energy efficient. Okay. Now, this particular hard drive is a Western Digital. It's a uh, one terabyte, 7200 RPM, SATA 3.0 hard drive with a 64 megabyte cache. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't run the fastest. It doesn't have terabytes of data storage, um, multiple terabytes of data storage. But it does have a pretty good size cache and reasonable reliability. Um, so, there you go. As far as Windows operating systems are concerned, depends on whether or not you want your computer to have a tablet or a mobile phone type interface. Most people I know don't own fancy tablets or phones, so they prefer Windows 7 as opposed to Windows 8. The home editions tend to be sufficient for basic computer users. So that's why I have here a Windows 7 64-bit home edition. Okay. Since keyboards and mice are simple things that are entirely subjective, I'm not going to cover those. But a computer basically consists of these nine essential parts. Okay. You got your processor, your motherboard, your case, your RAM, disk drive, oops, there it is, okay, your video card, your monitor, hard drive, and your operating system, okay. Now, if your case needs extra fans, you can get those, those are relatively cheap, like five bucks or so. So keep in mind you can get those um, for additional places on your uh, case, which in this case actually happens to be in the side panel right there. Mm -mm. Okay. So, <clears throat> in the remaining time of this video, you'll get to see time-lapse footage of me assembling the computer parts we just discussed. <laughs> 